Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionals. So we are talking about hematology. We have talked about myeloproliferative disorder in an introduction. Then we have talked about CML in a previous video. And today let's talk about essential thrombocytosis. What is essential thrombocytosis? It's when you have an essential, which means a primary problem that leads to lots of platelets. So let's get started. So here is hematopoiesis. Myeloproliferative disorders are here. Lymphoproliferative disorders are here. Whereas essential thrombocytosis, it's here. It's when you have lots of platelets. So here is a list of the myeloproliferative disorders and the lymphoproliferative disorders. We have talked about CML before, polycythemia vera. And today's topic is essential thrombocytosis. Myeloproliferative neoplasms are diseases of the elderly with hypercellular bone marrow. All cell lines are increased, but there is one that dominates. In this case, it's the platelets. Lots of platelets. Rapid cell turnover will lead to increased uric acid and gouty attacks. And they can transform into acute leukemia and they can transform into each other. And they can lead to bone marrow fibrosis because it's working like crazy. What is the genetic problem in essential thrombocytosis? It's the famous JAK2 kinase mutation. JAK2 kinase is very deceptive and manipulative. It will deceive the receptor for thrombopoietin, okay, and it come here and stimulate the receptor, which will lead to increased production of platelets. But that doesn't mean that thrombopoietin level in the plasma is high. In fact, it's decreased. Why? Because if you have lots of platelets, why bother secrete TPO? So essential thrombocytosis, one of the myeloproliferative disorders, clonal malignancy leading to increased production of platelets. This is different from thrombocytopenia where we have less platelets. There is JAK2 kinase mutations and all cell lines are increased, especially the thrombocytes. When you have lots of platelets, three things will happen. TPO will decrease, this is called negative feedback. Increased platelets will lead to increased risk of thrombosis. Why? Because platelets, they are thrombocytes, that's what they do. And increased risk of bleeding. Why? Because these platelets sucks. It's a disease. That's why we call essential thrombocytosis hemorrhagic thrombocytosis. Fine. It's a disease of the elderly and essential thrombocytosis is weird because it's more common in women than men. In cases of polycythemia vera, it's roughly the same, men equals women, but here it's more common in women and we don't know why. There is hyperviscosity syndrome, of course, leading to visual disturbance, neurological problems and bleeding. Clinically speaking, we have lots of thrombocytes and lead to bruising, bleeding, erythromyalgia and thrombosis, including microthrombi leading to headache and visual disturbance, symptoms of the hyperviscosity syndrome, gout is possible, hepatosplenomegaly it's possible, but it's rare in essential thrombocytosis. It's not rare in polycythemia vera, but it's kind of rare in essential thrombocytosis. I've talked about erythromyalgia in the previous video, so please go ahead and watch it. It's treatable with aspirin. How to diagnose this disease? Complete blood count. All of them are high, especially platelets. Platelets are super high. If you do a peripheral smear, you'll find lots of platelets on the blood smear and many large platelets. Probably they are either immature platelets or megakaryocytes. Because remember, when your bone marrow is working like crazy, it starts secreting immature cells into the bloodstream. Okay, we cannot blame it. On bone marrow biopsy, you'll find generalized hypercellularity because it's a myeloproliferative disorder. And you'll find megakaryocyte hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Yep. And don't forget, diagnosis of essential thrombocytosis is a diagnosis of exclusion. You should exclude all causes of secondary thrombocytosis, such as infection, inflammation, iron deficiency, before you diagnose the patient with ET. How about the bleeding time in cases of ET? It's prolonged. Why? Because it's a platelet problem. These platelets suck. How about PT and PTT? Normal. Why? Because the coagulation factor are perfect. They are fine. Okay. You can do genetic tests to find this manipulative JAK2 kinase. Complications of essential thrombocytosis. You have lots of platelets leading to increased blood viscosity and increased hypercoagulability. When you have lots of blood viscosity, according to physics, if you have lots of viscosity, you will have less blood velocity, which means blood stasis, which means Virchow's triad, which means thrombosis. So thrombosis are very uh, are kind of common in essential thrombocytosis and malignant transformation into AML or myelofibrosis. 
So let's refresh our memory. What are the causes of secondary thrombocytosis? Iron deficiency, infection, inflammation, splenectomy, trauma, surgery, and ischemia. If you recall my videos on iron deficiency anemia, sometimes we had increased platelet counts. Why? Because iron deficiency leads to thrombocytosis. You have to exclude all of these causes before you diagnose the patient with ET. How to diagnose essential thrombocytosis? Use your brain. I'm having lots of platelets and lots of thrombosis and erythromelalgia. Use aspirin. I'm having lots of platelets. Use cytoreductive therapy such as hydroxyurea, a drug called anegrolide. Wow. And what if that patient needs surgery urgently? You can do platelet pheresis, which means removing the platelets from his system or her system because it's more common in women. What is the mechanism of action of this anegrolide? So anegrolide is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. And if this is the mega karyocyte, and here is your nice mature platelet, anegrolide will block this step. It will block the maturation of mega karyocytes into the platelets. That's why it's helpful to treat essential thrombocytosis. Only medicosis will tell you that. Let's try to answer the case of last video. So we have 67 year old male, severe pain in his left big toe, maybe gout. And he said, it has been very bad at night, probably gout. I don't even drink alcohol. That's a very knowledgeable patient because yes, alcohol can cause flare ups of the gouty arthritis. And by the way, whenever I take hot shower, I feel so itchy afterwards. This is aquatic pruritus. On physical exam, there is hepatosplenomegaly, lots of hemoglobin and hematocrit. This is probably polycythemia vera, a myeloproliferative disorder. What do you expect to see on bone marrow biopsy? And the answer, of course, is hypercellular marrow with plasma, with, sorry, pan myelosis, increased of all cell lines. It's not normal, okay? This is, is stupid. Clonal plasma cells more than 10%. This is multiple myeloma. Hypocellular marrow, this is probably aplastic anemia. Myeloblast more than 20%. This is a myeloid leukemia. Is it AML or CML? If this guy is old, it's probably CML. But again, it's not the correct answer, so forget it. The correct answer here is C. Your bone marrow is working like crazy. It's a myeloproliferative disorder. If you haven't already subscribed, um, there is no hope for you because this channel is awesome. Okay, I don't brag. And please consider support this, supporting this channel on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Medicosis. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard.